All right, guys, so in this video, I just wanted to go over some data on park factors within MLB stadiums, which stadiums are best for offense, for defense, what is my reaction, what is my feel on each of these parks and these overall numbers. This is from Baseball Savant, and it is rolling data. So this is three years of data combined from 2020 throughout the 2022 season, and it has the overall park factor with the average being 100. You can see, not surprising at all, Coors Field. I think Coors probably should be in first by a mile. Like, Great American being one point behind at 111 behind Coors, I think is, you know, to me, accurately, Coors is just significantly the best hitter's park. Of course, that's due to the altitude and they did make cores very big in the outfield to try and combat, you know, all the home runs that were going to be hit. And it actually just made it worse because it made it more ground to cover for the outfielders. And now the whole place is just a hitter's paradise. I mean, you've got batters like CJ Crone with like a 980 home OPS because Coors is just so unbelievably hitter friendly. So to me, far and away, Coors is number one for basically everything outside of home runs. And that's only because they made the outfield so massive to try and combat it. They actually put an extension wall up in right center field over the bullpens to try and keep some more balls in the ballpark, which is something that very rarely happens. 95% of the time, you're going to be seeing fences moved in, not moved back. There, you know, you're not going to have walls that get put up to try and m minimize home runs, especially in 2022, 2023. But that's what happened at Coors. Great American, I would say Great American and Fenway, are 2A and 2B in terms of offense, just the vibe that I get. They're listed here at second and third. Angel Stadium is fourth. So Angel Stadium, I mean, some, you know, they decide to move their fence in, but they actually didn't move it in. They just made the home run line lower. So you guys know the wall in right field at Angel Stadium. Above the yellow line is a home run. So if the ball hits off of the wall, above the line, that's a home run? I understand we want more offense, but come on, folks. At what point does it get ridiculous and pathetic? If the ball hits off the wall, it's not a home run. What is this, Little League? I like, But I guess that's why it would be fourth. To me, I'm very surprised that Angel Stadium is fourth. It doesn't really strike me as you know, a crazy offensive park. Now, I will say when you look at the park factor, there is a major drop-off from Fenway to Angel Stadium. It goes from 109 to 104. So, But I would think Angel Stadium would probably be closer to about even. Kauffman Stadium, that really surprises me. I guess you could say it's a triples paradise, and it certainly is with the massive outfield. But there's really no easy home runs that get hit, hit in Kauffman Stadium. Citizens Bank Park is not surprising at all. Guaranteed rate field, especially during the summer, that ball flies out of there. Dodger Stadium, I don't know what it is, but I have always thought of Dodger Stadium as a pitcher's park. It's really kind of neutral because it's at 102. So like it, it's slightly a hitter's park here, but the fact that like Dodger Stadium is above Oriole Park, that's crazy to me. I've always thought of Oriole Park as like a top three or four hitters park, but they went crazy on Oriole Park. If you guys know about, they moved the fence way back in left field, but then they made the wall higher as well. You can't do both of those things, man. You can do one of them. You can either make the wall higher or move the fence back, but doing both of those things you're going to make it too pitcher friendly, but apparently it kind of leveled it out a little bit. It's at 101. Chase Field is at 101. The ball flies at Chase Field. They were one of the first ballparks to install one of those humidors to try and keep the ball from flying out. PNC is, is very even. I would say American Family Field, probably a little bit more hitter friendly, but these are all 100% even. Oracle Park, to me, is way pitcher-friendly. I know they took out Triples Alley, which is so stupid that they did that, but I think Oracle Park is pitcher. Truist Park, even. I would say Truist is a little bit more pitcher. Nationals Park, even. I would agree with that. 
And then looking at the bottom, progressive field, I agree, it's even. These are all at 99. Roger Center, so that's interesting. A lot of people think Roger Center is a hitter's paradise, and the fact that they're bringing the fences in even more is going to make it even worse. But according to this data, it's actually a very even park. Lone Depot Park, I just can't see that. I think Lone Depot is a massive pitcher's park, but they did bring the fences in. Globe Life Field, I think, is more pitchers, but I don't think it's crazy. Yankee Stadium is pretty much neutral, so, you know, Yankee Stadium obviously is going to be polarizing. It's the Yankees, but there's just a lot of casual people that really don't understand. They think just because Yankee Stadium has the short right field porch that it's like, a hitter's park. It's it's not. They have really deep gaps to both right center and left center. Wrigley Field, I would agree. Rig Wrigley Field is one of those, if the wind is blowing out, it's probably more of a hitter's park than Coors, almost. I mean, it's crazy. But yeah, most nights it's even. They get cold weather, though. It becomes a pitcher's park. Minute Maid is even. I mean, the Crawford boxes are crazy. But other than that, yeah, it's got a deep it's got a deep left center and a pretty deep right center. Target Field, I would say, is slightly more towards pitchers. I'd agree. Comerica Park is slightly more pitchers. Tropicana is just miserable. A lot of hitters complain about playing in, at Tropicana Field. City Field is definitely pitcher, even though they moved the fences in. It's still pitcher. Bush Stadium is 100% pitcher friendly. Coliseum is 100% pitcher friendly. Petco, if you guys remember Petco Park, when San Diego, before they had this whole thing with you know Slam Diego and hitting these home runs, that place was a desert. I mean, every game was 2-1. to one. When San Diego was terrible back in like 2014, 2013, they were bad for a while. And then T-Mobile Park, by far the most pitcher-friendly, according to the data there. Now, this is only home runs. So, a three-year data on home runs. Great American Ballpark. Look at that. 150-factor on the home runs, the next closest is the White Sox guaranteed rate field at 124. So by far, Great American Park is a launching pad. And then Dodger Stadium at 123, that surprises me. Angel Stadium at 121, Citizens Bank Park, Coors Field, American Family Field, Yankee Stadium, Rogers Center. So yeah, Rogers Center, it's only going to get even more of a buff. You know, you're going to even see it get better than that. And then the places where it's hardest to hit a home run, I would say the Coliseum has got to be the most hardest place by far to hit a home run. It's right with Comerica Park. Comerica Park has really deep alleys. You can see Kauffman Stadium also there, Oracle Park, Bush Stadium, Chase Fields down there, PNC, uh, Lone Depot as well. And then this is maybe a little more accurate for me. This is just based off of 2022. And you can see Coors Field at 115, Great American at 109, Fenway at 107, Dodger Stadium, Citizens Bank, Angel Stadium, Lone Depot. I just, I don't understand that, man. I, I do not view that as a hitter-friendly park. And then looking at the most pitcher-friendly park, T-Mobile, Petco, City Field down there, Coliseum. Yeah, the Coliseum is always going to be a pitcher-heavy park. So is Bush Stadium. And then this is ESPN's Park Factors from last year. You can see they have Coors Field. I don't know why it says null. I don't know if they like lost the naming rights to the stadiums or something. I think it's just a glitch. But you can see Denver, Colorado, that's Coors Field. 1.45 runs. The next closest Great American Ballpark at 1.1. It is a major uh, lead for Coors Field according to ESPN. The most hitter-friendly park by far. This is just an overlay that's interesting. So this is Yankee Stadium versus Fenway Park. And you can see, you know, obviously Fenway has the massive uh, green monster in left field. So that's part of why Yankee Stadium. But overall, I didn't realize how much of a dead zone right field is at Fenway. I mean, if you're like Raphael Devers, you got to be pretty annoyed with that. That goes deep. After the pesky pull, it goes really deep. And Yankee Stadium... It's got a way far deeper left center field than Fenway. 
Now, this is an overlay of every stadium, and I will say it is slightly outdated. So, I'll, I'll, we'll just go through all the things. So, yes, the Coliseum has the most foul territory. If you look on the bottom right, by far, that's because it's a multi-purpose stadium. Looking at the deepest left field line, Wrigley Field, that is still a fact today. You know, obviously they're not going to move Wrigley Field in or anything. Shortest left field line, it is Fenway Park, and that's due to the Green Monster. Most shallow outfield in baseball is also Fenway, which obviously is offset by the Monster. Left field wall at PNC Park is furthest in left. Looks like it jolts out, and that is still accurate, I believe, today. Shortest center field is Fenway at 390, but they have a, if you look at Fenway, they've got a big wall in center field. Deepest center field, Minute Maid Park, which is, uh, you know, not true anymore. That was with Tal's Hill. They removed that. So to dead center, I believe it's around 410 now at Minute Maid. Mo biggest power alley at AT&T Park, which is not true anymore. That was Triple's Alley. They ended up cutting that in as well. And then the deepest right field is Wrigley also, which is interesting, which still remains today. So, And then you can see the right field at Yankee Stadium. It is very shallow. It is you know, known as the short porch there. There's an overlay comparison, Coors Field and Comerica Park. Comerica is in the red line. Coors is the actual ballpark being shown. So you can see a lot deeper for Coors left center. But uh, yeah, overall, Comerica, they moved their fences in once pretty heavily back in the early 2000s. And I believe they're doing it again in right center field. Basically, anytime you hit a ball deep to right center, it's going to be a triple because of how deep Comerica was to right center. But I do believe they are moving the fences in a little bit there. But just overall, my, my big takeaways, I would say just my personal opinion, by far, Coors is the most hitter friendly. It's not close. At number two, I would go probably Great American, pretty much tied with Fenway. For the best, when it comes to like the most neutral park in the MLB, I'd have to actually look back and see. Uh, the most neutral park, I mean, Nationals Park is really neutral to me. Progressive Field is very neutral to me. I guess Globe Life Field could be neutral, although it kind of, it, it, to me, it's more of a pitcher's. And then the most pitcher's park for me, it, it's the Coliseum. And I would say number two is like T-Mobile and Petco would be number three. And Bush Stadium has to be up there in terms of pitchers as well. So guys, that's just some data on the most pitcher-friendly and hitter-friendly ballparks. That's going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.